Hi everyone. I hope you are doing well. Let's get started with their presentation. I'm Yashar Shahinzadeh, a security researcher and bug hunter. Amir, my teammate, he used to be my mentee. Now we work together to explore cool new ideas, build automation tools, design CTF challenges, and just have fun digging into all kinds of security stuff. We usually pick a topic to focus on it, spending time on it. It might turn into a zero day or just a simple checklist. Then we apply those findings to our daily hunting. Last year, we found an interesting inconsistency between mail servers and databases. There was a parsing disagreement on some characters. Uh, we immediately set up a test bed to see what's going on here and it ended up discovering a neat attack. Uh, actually, it been discovered before us. We just put it, uh, put it into action and made around 50k from it. So, so I'm not saying it was a zero day, but many programs are vulnerable. And my most recent bug using this technique was about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. When it comes to inconsistency, it's very important. Uh, I think this is one of the most important root causes in security. Uh, it is the heart of so many bugs and it even, it even led to the discovery of entire vulnerability class, HTTP request smuggling. Now take a look at these URLs. We have two URLs here. Imagine there's a security function that checks if the host is legit. And a care function after that uh, sends a HTTP request. So if the URL is legit, the curl will send the request. Uh, what's the host here? What's your opinion about this? Uh, attacker.com or site.com? Honestly, honestly speaking, it doesn't even matter. The point is uh, the layers, every layers in, in the web application should never disagree on the host on the on the on host extraction. If they do, there is a high chance of a vulnerability. So this is called inconsistency. Amir actually tweeted out this case roughly uh, a year ago as a white box challenge. He usually does. A bunch of hunters jumped in, but we never revealed that it was uh, actually. Uh, a money maker vulnerability and I'm saying money maker because it's easy to test, very easy to test, not some complex gadget chaining exploit or something similar to. Today, uh, we want to introduce the attack and its root cause. It occur, uh, it can occur in various parts of the web application. I'm covering the reset password functionality using an arbitrary email uh, mail server and MySQL. So Let's review the reset password functionality together before vulnerability. Uh, I put a diagram to better understanding. The user enters their email address. The web application checks the database to see if the user exists or not. Uh, to check, it runs a select query with the user's inputs. If the user is found, if the user is found, a token gets saved in the, in the database. The token will also be emailed to the user. So that's the workflow, simple and clear. There is no question in it. But, but the question is, which email is passed to the SMTP server? The one that the user typed in or the one that is stored in the database? Which one? This one or this one? It's a very important question, very important. If, if, if it's pulled from the database, the web application is totally safe. And if it's pulled from the user input, the web application is vulnerable. And you might be wondering why this happens and how. So to answer this question, let's check out the SMTP server's behavior when they encounter a different character set. As you can see, the SMTP server treats A and the odd A as completely different. 
They are two separate email addresses and never conflict with each other. We have two email addresses here with two different A. Now, now it's important. Let's take a look at the MySQL at the same situation. MySQL casts the odd A into the normal A. And that's where the story begins. Uh, in the first query, look at the first query. MySQL cast, uh, cast odd A into normal A, so they end up equal. But in the second query, A doesn't match the odd A. Because, and why, why? Because of the collation, collation setting. The good news is for hackers, <laughs> the good news is the MySQL default settings handle that casting automatically. So, so as a con uh, to conclude, if developers just code things as usual, uh, that inconsistency came in. And this is good news for hackers. <laughs> So uh, it's a question here. Where did this? Uh, where did this odd a uh, come here, come from? Just pick a letter. Just pick a letter like a, b, c, anything, and run a simple fuzzer. You will quickly find all characters that get treated like a. It's really simple. I will show, uh, show you the fuzzer in the next slide, which is this. The script connects to the database and runs a select query to find characters. It's, uh, in this uh, example, the characters that behave like A. It's simple, nothing special about this script. So, what's the attack scenario here? I described the vulnerability, and we want to look into the attack scenarios. Um, I will walk through three attack scenarios. Uh, one, forget password section. Two, the second, auth provider email trust. And the third, Auth provider redirect URL. Let's go for the first one. The scenario is simple. Find an email to take over, just it. Uh, in the forget password section, enter the victim's email address, intercept the HTTP request, and change the email to the Puni coded version. There is a password link for the victim, will then be emailed to the Puni coded email, to the Puni coded email, not the actual email. Not the original email, which is under your control. So let's see in the diagram. The attacker enters uh, in the first stage, uh, victim at gmail.com, but with the odd A. I highlighted the, the A here, uh, which is not a normal A. Okay. This email actually belongs to the attacker. Uh, the attacker has the mailbox. In the next step, the web app runs a SQL query to check if the email exists or not here. It gets interesting. MySQL casts the odd A into normal A, so the attacker's emails turn into a real victim's email address because of the casting. Since the email does not exist in the database, uh, uh, sorry, since the email exists in the database, a token is issued and saved. Then the SMTP server sends the reset link to victim at signgmail.com, but with the odd A, which is go to the attacker's mailbox. And that's it. The attacker now has the victim reset password link. Simple, practical, zero click, a can takeover. Just it. Now, I will give the stage to the Amir. He is going to show us the attack in action. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well. In this part of the presentation, I will demonstrate to you how attacker can use this trick to take over any victim's account. So let's start by creating the victim's account. Once you create your account, you can log in into it and see your profile information like name, email, and creation date. So let's try to take over the victim's account. To do that, I go to the forget password section. In here, I will enter the punicoded version of victim's email. It's better to use bear suit to send this payload because it might be encoded by the crow.
Once we check the inbox, something is strange. The application sends the reset password link to the attacker's email, and attackers can use this link to change the victim's password. So, what's happening here? If we look at the forget password function, we can see after the uh, application received the email address from you, uh, it will search inside the database and update the reset token for that. And then email the reset password uh, generated link to the email which one controlled by attacker. And that was able to zero click account takeover. Let's back to my friend. Here is an example of a public program on HackerOne. As you can see, I explained the full attack scenario in the report. We have actually found a bunch of websites that were vulnerable to this scenario. In this case, they should have paid 25k, but unfortunately, the asset wasn't considered a main one. But 6k is good. I'm okay with that. <laughs> we went a little bit too far, even started checking WordPress. It turns out uh, it's not vulnerable. Even using a risk collation, uh, it was uh, it, it isn't a surprising news. The WordPress is safe. <laughs> no other is. I want to show you this secure case. Why? Why? Because it might be interesting to you. WordPress uses uh, this collation, as you can see in the picture. A equal uh, the A the A normal A is equal to the odd A. So it seems to be vulnerable at the first glance. But, but it's not vulnerable, it's not vulnerable. The WordPress uses user input to query the database. But when it comes into sending the email, it uses the email pulled, pulled from the database. And this is so important. So even if you enter a punicoded version of victim at signgmail.com, WordPress generates the reset link for the real victim at signgmail.com, okay? and sends it, sends reset password link to the legitimate email address. So it's safe. Even using a risk collation. Uh, now let's look at the auth provider email trust issue. Some websites are safe in the forget password flow, but they are still vulnerable to other cases like auth login. If the provider responds with a punicoded version of the email, uh, I'm talking about the callback phase during the login in OAT. Uh, the web application can become vulnerable to the same attack scenario. Uh, I put another diagram to better understand it. Here's the OAT flow. In the final step, the web, the web application calls the provider API and grabs the malicious email address. That's where the vulnerability comes in. The application runs a query to find email address in the database. And if MySQL casts the odd A into a normal A, the attacker will log, will log in as a victim. Just simple. And we checked Google, we checked Apple, we checked Facebook and other providers. Uh, Google, about Google. It delivers the email safely. I'm not gonna comment on the Apple and Facebook. You can test those yourself but what's surprising is that login with gitlab is actually vulnerable we found this it delivers the punicoded email to the application which leads to the vulnerability of course of course that's only if the application does not check the email address or using a risk collation it's obvious but if you go in a website and see login with gitlab button it's slightly vulnerable as we found several ones. Okay, uh, let's call the AMI once again. Hi again, welcome to the second part of the demonstration. In this part, I will show you how attacker can take over the victim's account using GitLab OAT. Before we start, we have a quick setup here. You should register inside the gitlab.com using punicoded version of the victim's email. It's too easy and uh, just not like a normal registration. After you done that, we just need to click on the login with GitLab. As you can see, we're logging inside the victim's account. 
So what's happening here? If we look at the data GitLab returns to my application, uh, you can see it's returned the email field, but it's not encoded. And my application trusts the GitLab and use it inside all of my queries. And uh, this email address match with the victim's account and we log in inside the victim's account. Let's back to my friend. This attack can also be carried out in auth provider callback URL. I'm not gonna dive into it. I just want to introduce the idea. The concept is basically the same as previous ones. We have found many bugs, uh, around 20 in all HackerOne bug crowd integrity programs. I'm sure uh, uh, there are still many out there and there are also more attack vectors with Puni code, with this Puni code and with this root cause. If you found anything new, it would be great to share it online or with us, it's okay. And the talk is over. I hope you find it useful and thanks a lot to hanging out with us. See you around and goodbye.